1862, and the Confederacy has been at war with the United States for two years. They hunkered down in a massive fortress to hold out a line that would lead the Union into the South. Pitched at the top of this Confederate hill fortress are hundreds of tents and a lot of rations. That means that the Union's only choice is to attack in order to drive them off the hill. But the Union have brought with them the legendary Iron Brigade to accomplish this mission. Backing up the Iron Brigade are hordes of Union soldiers ready to charge the hill at a moment's notice. This will be an immense Civil War battle. What's up guys, it's me, your boy, Daily Tactics here, back with some more Men of War Assault Squad 2, Board in the Fire America mod, and we have another massive fortress battle. I, I might have a bit of an addiction to massive fortress battles, guys. I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, am I going overboard? Maybe a little bit, but I love fortress battles. They're so great. And today we have the Confederacy uh, defending against a massive Union army. I will be commanding the Union army in this video because I've noticed with this map, that wayfinding on it can be really challenging for the AI so uh, I'll be helping out the Union and giving them commands and stuff like that but that being said the Confederacy has such a large defense here with hundreds of troopers up here in trenched positions uh, and with cannons this is gonna be really hard even with a human's help uh, so we'll see if I manage to do this or if the Union will fall to the wayside uh, from the Confederacy. Uh, the Union does surround them about halfway around. The only area they're not really surrounding them from is over here, and that's because that's the end of the map, and I couldn't put troopers over there. Uh, but the rest of the area is completely surrounded by Union soldiers about to collapse in on this fortress. So guys, without further ado, I'm really excited about this. I hope you guys are too. Remember to smash the like button. Uh, let's try and get a thousand likes in the first 24 hours. Subscribe if you have not already. We're trying to hit 250k by the end of the year. And comment down below if you're enjoying, uh, you know, Men of War Born in the Fire America mod and what battles you'd like to see in the future from this mod. Either way, let's get it poppin'. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to go ahead and press start right now. And I believe the first point of contact will be over here. So let's watch first. And yep, there is a whole lot of fire coming out of the Confederacy into our Union boys over here. Uh, it is, in fact, ravaging the Union lines pretty wholeheartedly. I'm not going to start commanding troopers until a little bit later in the battle. I want to see just how well the AI ends up doing without my help uh, and then make the decision from there whether or not they need my help. Oh, look at the flag bearer staring up. Oh, what are you, what are you doing, Chief? He's just like, dear Lord, protect these men. Maybe it's the preacher. Maybe the preacher got the honor of uh, holding the American flag. Who knows? Either way, he's just chilling there. <laughs> he's just kind of hanging out. Oh, maybe he's peeing. He he might be peeing. And then that's just like, oh, yeah. I drank too much water out of my canteen this morning. Thank God I found a brief respite in battle to, uh, to let one out. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Like, oh, God, no. Oh, no. He's dead. Oh, God. Oh, my mans. Oh, I can't look. At, I can't bear to look anymore. We're going to the other side of the battlefield. The peeing wonder has fallen. He's gone. No. <laughs> It's just too much for my heart to handle. Either way, the Union soldiers marching on this end of the battlefield as well. Uh, it's not as bad of a slaughter, I will say, but uh, it is pretty devastating. It seems like they're doing actually better at sniping the Confederacy over here. We're seeing a lot of Confederate soldiers going down behind these trenches over here. <gasps> Excuse me, I had a hiccup there. Ooh. Hopefully I don't have the hiccups, and that would be a really annoying thing during the entirety of the video. <laughs> More Confederates over here seem to be alive. Uh, how are their cannons doing? Oh my god, a Union soldier charged all the way up here and died? That's crazy! He got so far! Um, but, uh, I mean, just one cannon trooper seems to be dead out of all four of the cannons here, so that's not a bad ratio. One out of eight. That's pretty good. Can we see the craters? Oh, yeah, there are the craters from the cannons. It seems like maybe this one, like, killed that guy or something. Maybe one hit back here and killed the whole lot of them. 
not fully sure, but the cannons don't seem to be super effective. This one landing just right there. Yeah, cannons cannons don't be <laughs> don't be seeming to do all that much if we're being completely honest here. Uh, the far left over here is definitely the slowest point of the battle. Um, and then the middle over here, we're ramping up a little bit. We're getting some more Union fire off. BEA, beautiful boys, keep on shelling. Keep giving them what for. Uh, and then over here, this is where we've got the most Union soldiers. And they're actually, they're actually clamoring to get up to the top here. And uh, many of them dying before they actually made it to do anything. Maybe a bit of a bayonet charge right there. Ooh, that guy just backpedaled and saved his own butt, I think. Oh, and then he ran forward and died. Rip my mans. Oh, guys, stop just running in there. <laughs> I can't tell what they're doing. If they're maybe going for a charge or something like that, and then they're just getting slaughtered before they could do it. There are some Union soldiers deep in there that are dead too, so I don't know. Something bad's happening. We've also got Union soldiers over here on the far right. These are some of the gents from uh, the Iron Brigade, I believe. They have those hats. Um, and uh, they are coming up the actual main path of the fortress over here, the area where you're supposed to come up from. Uh, oh, look at this guy making some progress. Ooh, we get shot down before he can get into the trench. I think the main goal of the Union here is to actually hop into this trench system, and then you're ingrained in some good cover. Um... And can more than likely actually fight back a little bit. Oh, that was a point-blank shot from that chap right there. He did great until he got killed. <laughs> he did do great until he got killed. All right, over here on the far right, every Confederate soldier over here is dead. Wow, the Union did a great job over here. Up until, like, right around this corner where there are still Confederate soldiers alive. But, wow, these guys really gave them what for. Impressive stuff, fellers. Uh, they did take a pretty bad beating, but like they they made some progress. That's not bad. All right, how's the back line where the uh, the peeing Union soldier died? Most of these guys are dead. There's a few left alive beyond this little lip in the hill, and I think that is literally the only reason they're still alive is because of the lip in this hill. Uh, but other than that, uh, the vast majority of these guys have perished. So. It's a bit of a tit-for-tat situation. The Union manages to clobber the Confederacy over here, but the Confederacy manages to clobber the Union over this way. Woof. 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 <laughs> Woof indeed. All right, I would like to uh, get some troopers up here, and I think it is about time that I start uh, commanding some Union soldiers. So we're going to go in slow-mo, and I am going to launch a massive assault here. I would like to, and this, you know, strategically... Maybe not the best option uh, in this, but this is what I would like to see out of this battle. I would like to see a massive kumbaya charge. You know, the charge to end all charges. I'd like to see the Union really giving them, like, the full weight of their soldiers here and just, like, launching a mass assault forward. I think that would be really cool to see. So I am just ordering folks ahead, ordering them into a bayonet-style charge. Uh, you know, they do have melee abilities, so if they get close enough, they can use those bayonets, if need be. And I think that would be really neat to see. Either way, here comes the first wave coming on up here. Let's go in normal speed. I think this is a normal speed scenario. A lot of them dying as they get on up here, but a lot of them managing to make it on through simultaneously, which is great to see. Uh, yeah, lots of them peppering the uh, confederates with some good amount of fire here more reinforcements coming on up a little bit they're in the trench system more deaths occurring as they get into the second layer of the confederate trench defenses here more soldiers coming in though uh, they do have a pretty steady block of reinforcements heading on in here and they are getting a lot of good fire out here this is what i'm talking about this is the good stuff heck yeah brother all right what we're going to do now is we are going to launch another one of these assaults, except for this time over on this end of the battlefield, seeing if we can't get a mass, uh, just absolute pincer movement going from two different halves of the battlefield. The problem is we don't have too many troopers left alive over there, or else this would be a truly ultimate pincer movement, and we'd see, I think, some serious devastation. But... We'll make do with what we got here and, uh, you know, send up the boys on these two different angles. Uh, let's send up some more reinforcements around this area, too. Get some more Union soldiers up there and see what these guys manage to do uh, with their, their guns. Let us see. Okay. So, 
We have reinforcements heading up this way. Another round of Confederate fire coming on in. I think it's it's just about time we got these reinforcements in here um, as a lot of those Union soldiers who had been sent in in the previous wave had ended up going down and a lot of those reinforcements go down pretty quickly there as well it's not great how's the middle line doing we did just send in a pretty massive charge there uh and it seems like most of them actually died before they could even get into the trenches here a whole lot of them ended up dying uh, and those that didn't die it seems like they bailed on the charge and ended up at the foot of the hill over here firing away with whatever guns they've got I can't really blame them, uh, you know, seeing the first line just getting absolutely smothered in fire, I, I would probably bail as well. <laughs> so I think it is really going to be up to this line over here to see if we can't get a breakthrough uh, in the Confederate defenses here and get a nice little push going. Um, let's reinforce this side over here, get some more troopers going up this way. This is going to be a hard fought battle going forward. We've seen a lot of death so far and I think it is just the beginning. All right, let's add some pressure over here with a few more troopers. Get some flag bearers up there too. Actually, the vast majority of troopers that are left out here on the outskirts are just flag bearers. Just kind of chilling with the flags. Get the flag in there. The flag is a very important piece of uh, the uh, the Civil War. It was it, it, It's in legend that if you saw the flag bearer go down, you immediately went to go and recover the flag and uh, re-hoist it up for fear that the enemy would be able to capture your state's flag, which would be a big no-no. And basically be like bringing disgrace onto your entire family's name, your entire state's name, your country's name. So the, the flags of the uh, war were, were extraordinarily important for both sides. So, you know, the flag bearers got to keep those flags up. And this one is on the ground. Not great. Not great. That is, that is technically disrespecting the flag. What are you doing, boys? What are you doing? All right, more gunfire up here. Lots of pistol troopers. I think these are actually officers who were sort of hanging back in the battle in previous stages of the fight, but now they're getting forced forward, baby. No one gets to stand out of this fight. <laughs> Whether you're an officer or a regular enlisted soldier, you're going in there. Ooh, one second, boys. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that, guys. I was getting a phone call that was important. Either way, we're back to the assault here. The pistol officer still firing away. We've also got some gents over here. I don't know why they're British now. <laughs> More gents over here. Firing away, which was really very nice. It reminds me of um, a book I had to read for my Civil War class in college called um, Fallen... A no, Killer Angels? I think it was called Killer Angels. Phenomenal book. Uh, it was all about the uh, the Battle of Gettysburg, and it details the days that happen. Um, it is a little southern biased. Uh, if you'll notice, they do uh, they do <laughs> give a give a peculiarly like uh, you know good takes to the uh, to the Confederacy, um, while sort of you know short ending the uh, <laughs> the Union every once in a while. It's interesting. It definitely does have some biases to it. However, it is just an absolutely brilliant book. I loved it. Uh, and it's not too biased, you know. There's there's just a few moments where you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> that That's some uh, some bias right there, but uh, sure. Um, but it, it is a genuinely fantastic book. I highly recommend it. All right, either way, we are kind of coming down to the last of the... Uh, the Union soldiers here, and there are a lot of Confederates left alive. I mean, a lot. Um, this fortress held astonishing, astonishingly well, and I think the biggest example of this is these boys over here. There are still so many troopers left alive over here. Meanwhile, there are so many dead Union soldiers off in the distance over that way. Over on these ends of the fortress, we see a lot more Confederate deaths, but like... This side itself totally won this battle for the Confederacy. Okay, it's not over yet, but it is certainly looking over in my eyes. All right, let's do a little... Ooh, nice little shot right there. Didn't get the kill. It just did some damage, though. I'm going to Rambo a couple of troopers here. Oh, nice kill. Ooh, but then we, we sauce our way a little too far out and get sliced up. All right, let's do a mini charge over here. Try and retake a better position. Eliminate a few of these confettis. Reload, sons! I think they dropped another right there. Fix the musket. 
Oh, uh, these might be rifles, not muskets. Either way, reload it. <laughs> Whatever the, the type of gun is. Ooh, one guy does end up getting domed in the head. There goes a second one. Oh, and the third guy used his bullet before I could aim it for him. Isaiah Hayes, what are you doing? Oh, and then he gets domed. He had three kills, though. That's pretty impressive, I gotta say, for a soldier in this. Um, all right. We got. I think we gotta do a final push here while we're still strong, you know? While we're still strong, we gotta do a final push. So, let's get up onto these ramparts here. Um, we really are low on troopers in general, but we have about three squads worth left. And I think uh, if we commit all of them, there is the slimmest of chances that we actually managed to pull something out of our butts here. Uh, let's send one group over there to the right while the other three go over in the middle right there. Uh, the first group already making it there and uh, the first round of Confederate fire coming on in. That's okay, there's a small number of Union soldiers here. Let the Confederacy fire away, you know, waste a few rounds on just a few troopers and hopefully we get the other troopers in here uh, amidst the Confederate reload cycle that's going on. And I think we might be doing that right now. Yeah, come on in quick, boys, before the reload is finished for the Confederacy. Come on, come on, and we surprisingly still have a few troopers in here from the uh, initial charge, so that's good. We're getting in here. We're trying our best to uh, eliminate as many soldiers as we possibly can. There we go. There's a lot of pistol units left, and I have a feeling maybe flag bearers drop their flags, as well as uh, perhaps some officers in here just utilizing their pistols, uh, and they might have been a little bit cowardly in the previous rounds of this battle. Who knows, though? Who knows? Tons more fire coming in from the Confederates, but uh, it seems like this barricade is really helping out the Union currently, and actually, fewer and fewer soldiers dying. This is beautiful. It's exactly what we needed right now, a bit more longevity in our battle. Uh, and uh, on the right here, in this little tiny flanking motion, these guys are managing to get some good fire out into the sides of these Confederates as well. Uh, it looks like we have whittled down the number of troopers over here. There's still a Confederate flag bearer over here left alive. I think there's a few. Yeah, there's a guy over there. There's a couple with the cannons too. The cannon's still alive. Look at this guy just checking out the horizon. What's up? What's happening out there, guys? <laughs> He's just hanging out. He's having a good time. <laughs> you know how it is. All right. Come on. I ordered everyone forward, and only a few people actually came forward. What's up with that, gents? Are these guys stuck or something? I'll help you out. Help you out to the top where you can potentially go and die. <laughs> How's that? How's that sound to you? All right. The last of the Union boys coming on forward. Now it's a bit more of a matter of how many kills we can get before we end up losing this battle. I mean, the Union started with two or three times as many troopers as the Confederacy had. You gotta remember that. The Union had so many soldiers for this battle. However, the Confederacy just obliterated them. I mean, this is the, the biggest tragedy. Over here, the... Let me un, unclip the camera. Um, The amount of Union soldiers who died over here, so bad compared to the Confederates that died at the beginning of that part of the battle. Like, this was a, a mutilation. That was terrible. That was a massacre. Um, over here was pretty good, but still a lot of losses. I mean, there were losses everywhere for the Union, and they just weren't able to outweigh the Confederacy, I think, uh, in terms of their troopers with this. So it just was not not as good as, uh, as I think the Union would have hoped for this battle to go. Um, but even still, they're still getting a lot of kills here on some of these Confederate rebels. Where'd you go, chaps? Why do I keep going British? I don't know. <laughs> If anything, the British were siding more towards the Confederacy uh, during the Civil War, but that being said, uh, foreign intervention was not common in the uh, American Civil War in the slightest. Sometimes aides would arrive, or maybe tiny divisions, or, or sometimes sneaky little supplies would slip through, slip through and things like that. But in general, foreign intervention uh, did not occur uh, in the Civil War as much as it did like during the Revolutionary War and things like that. Um, and the reason that a lot of uh, foreign nations did end up siding, uh, you know, at least a tiny bit, you know, leaning more like towards uh, supporting the Confederacy, leaning but maybe not even doing any action towards that lean, is because of um, cotton. Simply put, the South was one of the largest, if not the largest, um, cotton producer in the world at the time, which cotton is, of course, an amazing commodity 
um, at the time, just a, a commodity that is so unbelievably valuable for textiles and things like that. Cotton is king, after all, as as they would say. Um, and so it just makes sense that, uh, you know, they want to side with the South. The North, of course, did have um, production capabilities itself, especially with uh, factories. It, it heavily outweighed the South in terms of factory production and things like that. However, uh, in terms of raw materials, it, it was nowhere near the size of the South, especially in terms of cotton, where cotton could really only grow in the Southern climate compared to the you know, harsher New England climate just wasn't suitable for it. All right, we have one more squad of troopers here. They're moving up the line. Come on, gents. Many of them without their, their glorious hats. It's tragic. But move in they shall, and they're getting some more fire off. Moving forward. I'm actually surprised we have so many troopers left alive. And honestly, I think the pistol troopers that we have here are maybe more valuable than, uh, you know, a standard rifleman or musketeer. And I, I simply say that because they can get multiple rounds off, you know? I don't know how much damage they do. I don't think they do as much damage as a rifle, but you can get multiple rounds off with these pistols, which it can be just absolutely devastating for the enemy um, because you can sort of pepper spray them a little bit like a Gatling gun, uh, which is big chungus, big brain, uh, you know, nice weapon right there. So I think that is why, uh, you know, those those guys are a little bit more valuable. Oh, yeah, the Confederates whipping out a few pistols. They saw the, uh, the Yanks were using the pistols, and you're like, ah, I'll use the pistols too. Ah, uh, god dang it, I'm gonna use my pistol if they're using their pistol. I thought we was having a fair fight here. Now, I wanna, I wanna commando this guy. Come here, buddy. Oh, it's too far away. Oh, that's a major drawback of the pistol. It can only go 40 meters. And we end up getting dogged on right there. Let's see if we can kill the flag bearer. Get rid of that confederate flag. No, we missed! Ah, juke him! Juke the bullets, they can only shoot one at a time. No, we missed again! Oh, it's so hard to be accurate! Ah! Okay, come on! Alright, fourth time's the charm. That's what they say, right? No! We got killed before we could. The final Yankee left alive. Oh, and he died before I could even shoot his gun. Rip the dream. All right, well, the Confederates end up winning this battle. We did end up, uh, you know, wiping out a lot more Confederates before the end of the battle uh, from when I started taking over. But, man, was this a very good victory for the Confederates. Yellow are dead Confederate soldiers, and there's a lot. There are a lot of dead Confederates. And, you know, the Yanks did pretty good here. The Union soldiers, my my boys, uh, you know, did did pretty well, you know? They, they, they beat the secessionists down pretty good, but uh, the Confederacy wiped the floor with the, the Union. I mean, look at the deaths. The red outnumbers the yellow by so much across the entire battlefield. It's absurd. It is a, it is a slaughter fest. Yeah, rip. Rip, rip, potato chip. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you want to see more uh, you know Civil War battles in the future. Uh, Civil War is always so fascinating to me. I like doing it. So let me know in the future if you'd like to see more. Subscribe if you haven't already. And remember to smash that like button. I'll see you all in the next one, guys. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content. And hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.